All right, in these next few problems, we're going to be talking about what's called linear regression. All right, we're going to be typing, estimating some points. So if you would please, we're going to go over here. We're going to make a little. We're going to make a little table. You guys are going to help me out and making a table with these particular points. Now, in this particular problem, you wouldn't have to make a table, but I want to make sure you guys know how to use Desmos so you know how to estimate points and the line of best fit. So right now we're just going to make a few points. We're not going to do all of these, okay? But let's do our best to estimate some points here. So right now we have a scatter plot, all right? And the scatter plot below shows the relationship between the number of baseballs used in 14 games and the number of pitches thrown in these games. So here we have pitches thrown and the number of baseballs used. So what's our domain? If, if the question was, what's the domain, what would be, what would be the answer for our domain? What would you guys say? The pitch is what? Yeah, pitch is thrown. So just label it. You guys need to know what you guys need to know what domain is, right? Pitch is thrown. What would be our range if, if the question says what's the range of the graph? That's right. Just put number of baseballs. So it's just a quick little review of what domain and range are. All right, now so let's estimate this right here. About right there, what would you guys say this ordered pair is if you had to kind of Estimate. If this is at 250 and this is at 260, what would you guys say that's about at? I don't know, what do you say? 252, 253? Okay. What about right here? What would you say? 50? So right here in your table, all right, go ahead and put like 253 and uh, 50, all right? All right, let's go on to this one. What about right there? What would you guys say that's at right about here? 255, okay. And then over here we're at a uh, 60. All right, so go ahead and put 255 and, uh, yeah, 255 and uh, 60. All right. All right, uh, what about right there? What would you guys say this one's at? 250, I like it, 258, 60. Go ahead. 258 and uh, 60, all right. And we got this one here. Would you guys say that 262? I agree. 262.80. All right. All right. Now we got three clustered ones right here. Okay. Three clustered ones. So let's go ahead and start with this one. Okay. So right there, the 264, 100. All right. go down to this one right now these are going to have the same x value right but they have different y values okay so what would you guys say that's going to be at right about there it looks like it's just past halfway 266 maybe so here's what i want you to do 266 80 and then 266 90 yeah 266 80 and 266 90 Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop there because, I mean, I, that should get, kind of give us enough points. But what I want you to do right now is try to draw the line of best fit. The line of best fit is the line that basically maybe fits the best through all of these points. So a line of best fit is not going to go up here. It's not going to go down there. Where is it going to go? It's going to go through as many of these points kind of as possible. So I'm going to put mine right about there. Now, I could keep going, but I'm just going to say this is probably about what it would Estimate. So go ahead and carefully sketch that line right there on your paper. So now that you have that sketch, I'm going to go over here to Desmos. You guys are going to help me kind of get uh, these numbers in, all right? So help me out. What was the first ordered pair? 80, 264 and 100, 266, 80. All right, so we, and we kind of stopped there. Is that where we stopped? Okay, so understand in Desmos, if you can't see the points, obviously these are pretty big numbers, right? So what do we have to do? We have to zoom, yeah, just zoom out. 
and you can kind of see kind of see your clustered clustered order pairs okay now what we're going to do all right is we're going to change the scale so check this out do you guys see how we have zero and it goes 250 260 all the way up? so what are these going up by these are going up by what tens okay so what we're going to do is i want you guys to write something down real quick i want you guys to put x scale all right X scale is going, it's going up by tens. And what was our minimum X value? Let's put the minimum at 250 and let's put our maximum at 310. So we're going from 250 to, well, we kind of, we kind of cut it off at 270. We're we'll going to go to 310 is fine. And then here, what's the Y scale? What are they going up by? 20. So put Y scale. Your Y scale is 20. Um, and we're starting at, say, zero and we're going to... 180. So we're going from zero on the minimum. We're going to 180 on the the maximum. So I'm gonna show you guys something how to how to adjust your graph. Okay. So if you guys go to Desmos, all right. Um, if you guys go to the settings, do you see right? You guys see right here where he has like where you can start it. I'm gonna start it at 250. And then go to what did we say the max was three three ten, and we said the scale was what going up by tens, okay. Now our y let's go ahead and start our y's at zero, all right, and then we'll go all the way up to was it one eighty, and then we're going up by twenties. Do you see what happened when we when we did that? Like what the what happened on the screen? It looks more like what what's on your paper now, okay. So that's what you can do. You go to the little settings bar. And you can change your settings to see to kind of match the graph that you that you have. Now, what, hap what happens when I do y1 tilde mx1 plus b? Do you see how it kind of goes through all those goes through all those points? So, what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to write these numbers down, all right, in the corresponding boxes, all right? Write these numbers in the corresponding boxes. Our r squared is 0.7955. So I'm going to take a look at that real quick. 0.7955. So go back over here and just put right here. This is point, was it 7955? All right. Then the other one was 0.8919. All right. 0.8919. Our slope was 3.0, but 3.06 is fine. 3.06. And our y-intercept was negative 722.5 is fine. Now, this gives us kind of our estimated slope. But right now, what does this tell us? This tell, tells us that we have a positive correlation. It's not super, super, super strong. I mean, it's just a strong one, all right? But it's definitely a positive correlation. From yesterday, what do we, need, what do we know about these numbers. The closer these numbers are to what number? One. Then the stronger it's going to be. So that's not necessarily bad. Okay. It's 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 pretty it's pretty close to one. Um, if it's a negative correlation, what does this number need to be close to? Negative one. So if it's positive, it needs to be close to one. If it's negative, it needs to be close to negative one. Now in this problem, it says based on the scatter plot, what's the best prediction of the number of baseballs that will be used if two hundred and seventy five pitches are thrown. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to estimate where it would touch right there at 275 and then go over right about there. All right. So if you guys had to make the best estimate from the line of best fit that I drew, all right, that kind of hits right about here. Which one of these answer choices would you, yeah, it's going to be 100. Now, on this problem, did you have to do all this work to get the answer? No, you didn't have to do all this work. But I want you guys to understand, sometimes it might ask you whether it's a positive, a strong positive correlation or a weak positive correlation. All right? So that if this would be a positive correlation, but it would be weak if it was like, say, 0.65 or 0.54 or something like was, was far, far, far away from 1. So in Desmos, how could you, how could you do that? What if we said our x value was equal to 275? Look what happens. 
it intersects our line. What does it say? The pitch, the pitches would be in our the the points that we chose, close to what 120. Okay, but if we kept putting more points, look what happens. If we keep putting more points. Let's 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 do one more point. All right, let's take a look. What would you guys say this point is right here? Two. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, there's 295 right here. So it'll be 297 and 150. 297, 150. So I'm going to type in one more here. Ready? I'm going to type in 297 and 150. Now look what happens. One more point that was closer to our line of best fit. What happened to our prediction now? It went down to closer to what? One, 100. So do you guys understand the more points you actually put in your data, the more accurate your data is probably going to be for that particular situation. We only we stopped where? We stopped right here. But then as I soon as I added one more point over here, it got her it got a lot better a lot of better prediction. Because what was our prediction before that? One what? One basically one eighteen, right? And then we added one more point and boom. It gets us an a better prediction. All right. So that's what I want you guys to be thinking about when you're when you're doing this. All right. So right now, what I'd like you to do, all right, you guys go ahead and I want you guys to read the question very carefully. And what we're trying to do, remember, what was the the last problem? We didn't have to worry about doing all the information, right? But this problem, what's it actually asking for? It's asking for which best models the data from month one to month nine. So what you want to do right now. Okay, on your paper, what I want you to do, and this is going to be the last one that I do with you guys where I'm in this video, okay, because i got a class to teach. All right, but I want you guys right now to come up with some points from this, but only do it from what month? Month one to month nine. So do not use this data. You're starting here, and I want you guys to get your ordered pairs for these points right here. So that's what I want you to do. All right, well, so when you're trying to build a table, you kind of need to know the scale here. Hopefully you can see it starts at 85 and that's 89. So this would have to be at an 87. This would have to be at 91. This would be at 95. So I'm just kind of write these in. That would be at 99. That would be at 103, 107, and 111. So when you're estimate, you're trying to get the best estimate as you can. So if this is at a 1, I'm going to put a 1. Well, what would be perfectly between an 89 and a 91? You probably want to say 90, okay? And then how about this right here? We're at a 2. This one's pretty easy, right? This is at a 2 and a 90, 2 and a 99, all right? Um, this one right here, we'd say 3. And what's perfectly between a 97 and a 99? Yeah, let's put 3 and a 98. Okay, um, we have four. Oh, that's easy. Four ninety-nine. All right, four ninety-nine. Here at a five and what do you say? One o four. I agree with myself. All right, and we're at a six and what's between a one o seven and a one o nine? One o eight. Don't put six and one o eight. So this is very, very, very logical. It's not like I'm just making up stuff. It's you just you're just using your estimating skills. This is at a seven and one oh nine. This is at an eight, and right over here between one oh nine and one eleven is one ten. All right. And right here at nine. All right, so we're at 9 and all the way at what? What do you guys say? 112. And we're stopping, okay? Listen, I'm just letting you know. If you guys put this point, this point, and this point, it would totally impact your data. Because what really is the line of best fit? Something that kind of goes through all of those points as close to it as possible. All right? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to type these numbers into Desmos. All right? So... I'm going to go ahead and clear this guy out. I'll keep this, but we'll go ahead and delete some numbers from our last one. 
All right, so help me out, guys. What's our very first point? 1 and a 91. All right. No, it's not. It's a 1 and a 90. We're using my points. My points are better than your points. All right. All right. I right hear. All right, what's the next one? 2 and a what? All right, so let's just use, let's use my points, okay? 2 and 99. All right, good. Hopefully, if you saw those, you were correct. And what's the next one? Do you guys agree with him? 3 and 9. Okay, good. All right, then we have what? 4 and 99. What else? 5, 104. 6, 108. 7, 109. 8, 110, and that was it? Okay, because we did 1 through, all right, so we did that. We already have, I'm going to go and hit home, and then zoom out. So there's our line, there's the line that goes through all those points. Hopefully you can see right here, what does it say the slope is? 2.53, and the y-intercept's 90.6. So right now, go over here, type in 2.53. 5.3 and 90.6. 2.53, 90 90.6. The, oh, wrong one. Where is it? Oh, I haven't taken a screenshot of it yet. All right, our R2, R squared is 0 0.922. 0 0.92 is fine. 0.92 and our correlation coefficient right here, point nine six. Is that pretty dadgum close to a one? That means it's a strong correlation because it's pretty pretty close to one. So put point nine six. So this would be called a very strong positive correlation. Strong positive correlation. Now what answer would you guys choose if you guys typed in all the data and you got this two point five three at ninety point six? What answer would be the best answer? Right there. There's the slope, right? Are these exactly equal to this? No, they're not exactly equal to, but it says which one best models. So when you're looking for something that best, it's not going to be exact. It's one that best models the given situation, all right? And if you ever live in Texas, you know that these sometimes are can be true, like the temperature can get ridiculously hot sometimes, all right? And it... All right, now guys, this is going to be very, very, very easy. Why is it going to be easy? Because they already gave us what? The points. All right? It already gave us the points. So what I want you guys to do, all right, is I want you guys to type in these points with me. I'm not even going to make you plot the points because they're already plotted, so we're just going to type in the points. So you guys can see it there. Just help me out. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to clear everything up right now. All right, and somebody help me with the very first ordered, very first ordered pair. All right, one and a twenty. See, it's just right. We just look at the table, right? We don't even have to estimate because they give it to us. What's the next one? Two nineteen point five. What's the next one? Four seventeen. Okay, next one. Seven fifteen. Nine fourteen. 12, 13.5, and what is it? 14, 12.4, 15, 11.6, 11. 17, 11, 20, and a 9. Okay, so guys, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so we can kind of see these points right here, correct? Now, you wouldn't have to do all this. You could do a little estimating if you wanted to. It says, what is the best prediction of the percentage of body, um, uh, percentage of baby rhino rhinoceros' body mass that should be used to determine the amount of food given each feeding when it's what? 25 weeks. Would you guys agree that this right here would be at 22, right? Because these are going up by twos. What would tw 24 would be over here? And 25 would be like, right about right about here so if we did a line of best fit we would probably go like this and then you'd probably go up to it and 
over, and if we were going to go up and over, what number would are we getting close to over here? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Looks like it's close to a five, right? Okay, that's using estimating, like that's just using our estimates. That's not using the, like, that's just kind of, we had to draw the line of best fit. So if we were going to choose it, which answer would you choose if we just kind of drew the line of best fit, estimated where 25 was, and then drew a line over? G, okay. Now, what I want us to do is I want us to actually take a look at our data. And you guys see where it says X is 25? I want you guys literally to type in, right here, I want you to type in X equals 25 and see where it hits the line. Do you see where it hits the line? At what? 6.6.2, 6 right? So that kind of, what does that prove to us? That proves to us that 6% is the best answer. So isn't it kind of cool how you can get two lines to intersect and where the two lines intersect, that's called the solution to our, to our problem. So let's review, what did we do? What was the first thing? What would you guys say? The first thing we did is what? Type in all of our data, right? And then we evaluated it at x equals 25. Now what I want you to do, type these, type this information in real quick. Well, write it in, not type it in. 0 0.97 is the r, is the r squared. All right, 0 0.97. Our r1 value is negative 0 0.98, negative 0 0.98. And because it's negative 0.8, we call this a strong negative correlation, okay? And the M was what, negative? You said negative 0.54? Okay, what was the Y-intercept at? 19.8? All right. So right now, we, did, we got the answer two ways. What was one way? Just what, draw the line of best fit and estimate where it would be at, at a 25, which is right about here. The next way is a more accurate way is to take the time and the energy and type in your data and type in where what you're solving for. If, if x was 30, what would we do? We would type in 30 and see what would it be at 30. If x, if it says what's it at 24 weeks, we type in 24. So it's just basically that's what you're, you're just typing in whatever you're looking for and you find where the two lines meet. Is that simple enough? Okay. All right. So guys, right now, what I want you to do is I want to make sure that you have everything written down, all right? And we will be turning that in for a grade.